What's up, YouTube? On today's show, the top 10 quarterbacks breaking down the strengths, the weaknesses, who can bust, who can't, and on top of that, the first ever My Guy Pivot from our good friend Andy. Stay tuned. Hey, Funk Clan, before we start today's show, I want to remind you about FantasyChamps.com, the place to get all of your fantasy football hardware, belts, trophies, rings, draft boards, and guess what? Right now, if you head over there, you use that promo code BALLERDRAFT. With the purchase of any trophy or belt, you are going to get a free Fantasy Champs draft board. You're drafting live in person, you need that trophy and the draft board. Head over to FantasyChamps.com, use the promo code BALLERDRAFT. This is Christian Kirk with the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Blah, 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 blah. Welcome in to another episode of the show. It's Tuesday, August 12th. This is the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason joining you. It's Monday, August 12th. Why did I type Tuesday? I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Brooks has got, he's had a hard six, seven days with the doc. You it's just been, read Tuesday? I did. I, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> know what day it is on my own? Feels like Tuesday. That's all I can say. <laughs> I love it. I don't know. Um, it's Monday, August 12th, as I, as I said, and this is the fantasy footballers. Brooks will now slither away <laughs> into his shell. I see him going under the door right now, sliding under the crack. Borland's taken over. In, in He's fairness, got his calendar out. It probably feels later in the week because we were in here in the weekend. It's true. Doing the awesome draft with Juju. Uh, yeah, we had a really, really good time. On Saturday, hopefully you were able to join us for it. If not, you can experience it on our YouTube. The Sleeper um, Bowl. The Sleeper Bowl with Carl Anthony Towns and Juju Smith-Schuster. Ninja. Tim, Tim the Tapman. Uh, Zach Efron. It's a big celebrity draft. It was a lot of fun. There's a lot of trash talking. I will say this. Shame on you, Ninja, for sniping picks <laughs> by watching our stream, knowing what was going to happen. Between 90 seconds per pick. Having to commentate the draft mm -hmm. and oh, then having people steal our picks because we had to talk about them. I would have done the same thing. He was well, stream sniping like a pro. I, I'm still pretty happy with our team. I'm happy with our team. I'm happy with everyone's team, really. I mean, when you're going into a draft with uh, – we're used to drafting with like listeners of the show, industry people. You don't know where they're going to fall in fantasy football knowledge. And I, I would say it was a great success. It was a very competitive draft. It actually, yeah, it was a, a fun draft. You didn't have early quarterbacks. You didn't have players off the board that you didn't expect. You had a handful of them, but um, it was it was a good time. You can check that out on YouTube. You can follow the show at the FF Ballers on Twitter. We appreciate each and every one of you who comes uh, to uh, comes to our table, listens to the show each and every day. Maybe you're driving to work. Maybe you're working out. Mm-hmm. I've heard, I've heard that's good for you. Um, but we appreciate you. Appreciate you subscribing, reviewing, supporting the podcast. Uh, we're going to start today's show with some more week one preseason takeaways. I also teased on the Twitter. First time. This is, this is breaking ground for the fantasy footballers. The first time in history. Now, to be fair, to be fair, I'm going to set the table for this. We... we did our My Guy episode, the annual show where we plant the flag. These are the three players that we love. We have confidence in these players. This episode, the past three years, is where we say to do your football drafts, which is right around preseason week three. We've had more time to assimilate the information just due to scheduling and the fact that we could do this in front of a live crowd. We were like, okay, let's go. Let's do this thing live early August knowing there's a little bit of risk. So far, I mean, it's been sensational for me. Robbie Anderson news continues to be glowing Chris and positive. Chris Carson news has been outstanding. Feel great about that. There is one 
particular feller that the news has not been so great. Yeah, the last three years we did the show on the 20th, the 22nd, the 31st of August. And so I am making a formal... I'm P- re- I'm, pivot! I'm rescinding pivot! The, the My Guy tag from Dante Pettis. Now, let me... Don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't... Because he's not a My Guy. There are three My Guys every year. Like Mike said, flag planting. Guys you have ultimate confidence in. Just because I'm rescinding that tag from Dante Pettis this morning does not mean that Dante Pettis doesn't have the potential to break out. Break out. He was 100% picked on the basis of his talent and the plays he's made on the field. He only has 27 career receptions. But right now, my guy does not return punts in the preseason. My guy does not have to still earn a starting spot in the middle of August. And that's the situation for Dante Pettis. You know who was not on the field for preseason game one? Jimmy Garoppolo, George Kittle, Tevin Coleman. You know who was? Dante Pettis. Yeah, you know what? and he was there for a while. And you know what? 17 snaps. And Kyle Shanahan came out afterwards. Why was Dante Pettis out there? Because we're trying to figure out who our starting wide receivers are. <laughs> and the, some of the people that have been around Body shot. the 49ers camp have said, it's been a rough camp for Dante Pettis. He's not winning 50-50 balls. And he should have established himself by now. That's all I'm saying. That's why it's being rescinded. He could still break out. And for those of you that went out and drafted him in You're the seventh fine. round, You're... congrats. That's fine. Yes, 100%. I still like Dante Pettis where he's being drafted. Obviously, I would hope you still like him too. You're just taking the confidence of saying this is one of my three players I'm fully 100% confident in and taking it away. I still think he emerges as the number one wide receiver target for the San Francisco 49ers. I think he's talented. This could be a very big motivational tactic being used because I think that he's been playing soft. And that's not what Shanahan wants. Shanahan wants him to go out there like a killer, grab the balls, especially the 50-50 balls. There's been twice in camp where there's basically been a reception to Dante Pettis where a defender has come, and I don't know if it would be considered a fumble or an interception, but ripped the ball out of his hands. This belongs to me now. And so I think this is really a motivational tactic saying, look, if you're going to be the guy, you have to go out there and just, you know – Man up, old school football, and go. You Which know, means crush he still it. has he has to do that now to earn that spot. He has to do it. Will he do it? Maybe he's got not a lot of competition there. But that's based off of the competition. You know, yes, Dante Pettis. I have I have not adjusted it, any of my Dante Pettis stats yet. Now, as things go along, we do we update our our stats all off season in the ultimate draft kit. But as of right now, he's still in that that wide receiver two range for me. So. Long story short, could have dug in, could have said, hey, he's my my guy no matter what. We talk about on this show, new information, new facts, you got to have a new opinion. I feel like my opinion needed to change. We did that show early, so it's changing. My official my guy, I'm switching him out, is Christian Kirk, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. A um, couple minutes about Christian Kirk. Let me tell you why I love him for this season. I've been rising on him over the last several weeks. He was in consideration originally. Last year, rookie season for Christian Kirk. Three games with this guy named Sam Bradford, who's still making $5.5 million this year, by the way. This was a historically awful offense that Christian Kirk began his career in. 902 plays they ran. That's 56 a game. The top end of the NFL on plays run per game was 70 a game. That's 224 additional plays per season. The Cardinals' offense was atrocious. The quarterback play, the offensive line play, the pace of play, we know this. Yep. Despite the fact that the Cardinals put trash on the field by way of uh, the offensive line and the play calling, he still put up almost 600 yards last year, three touchdowns in 12 games as a rookie with Bradford and Rosen. And this is year two for Christian Kirk. He caught 65% of the targets thrown his way last year. That's a higher number than Juju. That's a higher number than AB. That's higher than Devontae Adams. What's even more impressive, his success rate on contested targets, 80 5.7% according to Matt Harmon's reception perception. He is a stud, and I am com- I am convinced that he is the number one in this offense. The wow. Pace, the pace of play is going to jump tremendously. He has experience like Kyler Murray does in this specific offense. He's played with Kyler Murray before, and if you go back, just watch some of the highlights of Christian Kirk last year. He can make a small play into a big play very quickly. I think this is a, a year two leap. What does that mean? That means I think you've got wide wide receiver two in Christian Kirk this year. So he is my official my guy change. 
I know you guys stay have, tuned have for not, next week. No, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is where is now that you bring it up. If Christian Kirk goes down to injury next week, I'm going to lose my mind. Oh, well, I would expect nothing less from the fantasy reaper. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. Takeaways from the rest of the preseason one games, guys. Um, talked about Pettis. What else stood out from the games through the weekend? I mean, we talked about the Thursday games on Friday, but the other games through the weekend, I mean, Darwin Thompson. Yep. You know, I, uh, Darwin Thompson, he is a good player. Running but, back for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, thank you. And he has he has the skill set that that the Kansas Kansas City Chiefs like. But I mean, it's he's he still has the same draft stock. The same players are still in front of him. Practice resumed today for the Chiefs. Damian Williams was on the field as the running back one. So it, if somehow Darwin got an opportunity, I think he would succeed. I think he would succeed far more than Carlos Hyde would in this offense. But it's, it's I think a long could, ways away. Yeah, I, I agree that he doesn't have the opportunity yet. He has not been given that. He is a clear backup. But I think that if he gets the opportunity, he's going to succeed with it. And I think he could succeed with it as well, if not better, than Damian Williams. Darwin Thompson looked good. To me, my big takeaway was there's a lot of rookie or, for all intents and purposes, you know, rookie-ish like Kalen Balaj running backs that – You've got their opportunity, and week one preseason, they all looked great beating up on the second team defenses. Like, and and that's not a knock on them. It's it's a reality to check that, that you know most of these guys, David uh, Montgomery, Devin Singletary, Darwin Thompson, Kalen Balage, they looked really good, but they were playing against you know the second stringers. I want week two. Those are the guys. Those four guys, those are who I'm watching. I really hope they're playing against some ones next week, this coming weekend. And specifically, the one guy that impressed me the most was Devin Singletary. I really did. I liked his film yes. in college. I really was hoping he went to some team with an offensive mind. I wanted Sean Payton or or uh, Andy Reid or someone that could take his skill set and utilize it. I, I didn't like the landing spot with Buffalo, but I'm starting to come around because they do want to run the ball, and I think he's a hyper-talented back. He looked good you know, in, in receiving. He looked good. Uh, he, honestly, he, he was pounding it hard through the middle. He was getting to the edge. He was catching the ball. He was like this well-rounded back in very limited work. So Devin Singletary would be my takeaway that I'm I'm keeping my eyes on rest of the preseason. An update: Adam Thielen is still a very good wide receiver. If you didn't see that highlight, it was a sensational catch, which was followed up by it's this this is not an overreaction, not reading into because it was Alexander Madison playing as the starting running back, but the fact that they were on the one, and they went to a play action, and then it was just a dump off to Madison. I mean, it was a passing play on the one to the running back. That's very interesting for for Dalvin. Um, if that's going to be be in the repertoire, yeah, I was going to say Mike Boone had a great showing in that game too. He always does. Sixty four yard Mike touchdown. Boone is a preseason hero. Twenty four years old though. I what I'm saying is I don't believe Madison is guaranteed to have that handcuff role in Minnesota. Oh, I I, think, I, I do not do. think that that is a guarantee. And I, I am, firmly do. And I am firmly on the side with Andy where. There's no way that we can I, – I can't imagine that being a guarantee that it's Madison's. Right now, I think they don't know who the official backup is. Um, you also had – I mean, just to circle back to the 49ers, Debo Samuel had a great game. Jalen Hurd had a great game, two touchdowns. Both players are worth late-round shots to me to see if somebody emerges. Trent Taylor, injured, going to be out an extended period of time. There are targets to go around beyond With George Kittle. <laughs> Predicting them might be difficult. But why not see what you got? I mean, Hurd may have a lot of opportunities around the goal line. Well, let's let's talk real quick about George Kittle. Now. Yes, the lack of confidence in Dante Pettis has that increased your confidence in George Kittle because we all look, Kittle's a great player, but what he did last year was very opportunistic. There was no one around, like you said, Dante Pettis, the guy that we're talking about, was twenty-seven career receptions. Everybody in that wide receiver court was hurt, so, so George Kittle dominated. He also dominated the targets where it wasn't so clear that Kittle would get the same type of target share at all, but I, there is a clear lack of confidence in any of the wide receivers. I told Jason in the studio a couple weeks ago how much I'm rising on George Kittle from a uh, guaranteed output standpoint. 
I think Kittle is – look, everybody gets that. There are a lot of tight ends in history that get that kind of opportunistic situation. Not many of them can break the record for yards on a season sure. and do what he did. So, yes, I'm very, very confident in George Kittle uh, this season. Yeah, I, I was going to say when, when Trent Taylor went down, everybody got a small bump up, you know, the, the Jalen Hurd and, and uh, Debo Samuel. But the guy that I was most confident in saying, okay, we need a real – you know, Trent Taylor is that – that little safety valve, I, I think George Kittle is, uh, you know, he's a guy that I've been avoiding in drafts up to this point just because he's he's very expensive, not because I don't think he's going to be good, but he's got to be good to justify that he's price. He's got to be great. Yes, he's got to be great to justify that price. And and I'm, ha I'm uh, like you, Andy, I'm having confidence switch because long time ago, early in the offseason on a buy-sell, I was selling Kittle, and I, I think I'm buying yeah, I, I think, um, obviously, Dallas Goddard in Philadelphia is missing the rest of the preseason. He That will factor into your Zach Ertz confidence. Obviously, Ertz, Kittle, uh, two of the top three tight ends. Uh, we do have a top ten quarterback show today. Um, and what day is it again, Brooks? Tuesday. It's Monday. Monday. Okay. Well, we'll get into some news first. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. We haven't got to react to the Antonio Brown helmet news yet. Told the Raiders he won't play football again. If the league doesn't let him wear his helmet, then they, they went to court and they petitioned to let him wear the helmet. And then he said, if you don't let me wear the helmet and I get hurt in your new helmet, I'm going to sue you. Um, because this is how um, <laughs> this is how the offseason has gone for Antonio Brown. So Tom Brady came out this morning, says it's been a tough adjustment for him moving to this new helmet. He's worn the same helmet for the last four Super Bowls. 12 straight years, and then he's got to make the adjustment. He's like, eh, this just, just kind of sucks, but I got to do it. Antonio Brown doesn't seem willing to say, this kind of sucks, I got to do it. He might, but... Yeah, I mean, when you're in a, in a negotiation and something is really strong for you, you can say, I'm going to take my ball and go home. Whether or not he would do it, if his bluff is called, is really the question. And I would venture to believe that if they force him to change helmets, he will still play football. I cannot imagine I can't that either. his legacy, not to mention the money um, that that he has coming his way, would just all vanish because of the helmet. So it is one thing where when you're in a draft and there's other guys in the same tier, I'm definitely not drafting Antonio Brown right now because other guys don't carry some percentage risk of just retiring out of the blue. But I don't expect him to retire even if he loses the battle with the NFL. His ADP was in the second round until the feet and the helmet stuff. It's, it's later now in the third, fourth round even. Um, I tend, I want to believe what you're saying. I mean, this is the same Antonio Brown that in an interview said he doesn't need football at all when they were debating and discussing this contract deal before he got traded. Uh, he's definitely a variable, but best wide receiver the last 10 years, so you're, that's what you're playing with. Uh, the Athletic is reporting – projecting that Jarek McKinnon will open 2019 on the injured reserve. Hey, Tevin Coleman. Yeah, Tevin Coleman looks like a uh, an ADP steal right now. We'll he see looked, if that persists. He was Tevin Coleman. Oh. But there was a time when he was. Tevin, Tevin Coleman. Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we went full. We yeah. did. He hasn't gotten enough love because I love Matt Breida. Right. Because he's free at the end of drafts. But Tevin Coleman right now, if he – he's a, what, fourth, fifth-round pick? It's it's going to go up, but if you are drafting right now and he goes around his ADP, I would be snatching him up. Um, Raheem Mostar got hurt as well. <sighs> so Man, that guy. That, that backfield, that guy. we said, oh, look how many guys they have. <laughs> they didn't have that yeah. many. Uh, Aaron Jones returned to practice. Calvin Ridley returned to practice. Duke, noise. Duke Johnson isn't going to practice because he has a hamstring Not injury. Not noise. So there you go. Um, Nikhil Harry left the game after a couple of nice catches, um, tweaked his hamstring during practice. So we'll see what happens. Right now, Jacoby Myers is ahead of Nikhil Harry on the depth chart, um, which this is not a veteran getting a little nod. The new Jacoby Myers is right. a un undrafted free agent wide receiver, made t many plays in the preseason game. Something to watch. Harry made plays in the game as well, but is banged up. So we'll see what happens. Paris Campbell's now missed two weeks of practice with a hamstring injury. Supposed to be close to coming back. Well, 
they said he suffered a setback on Sunday. Uh, is this, this affecting is, how you view him in drafts right now? Like the late round well, shot I'm, on Paris Campbell? Would you? I wasn't taking the late round shot okay. in, in in redraft. I just I don't like drafting rookie wide receivers unless it's something crazy like the San Francisco situation. But it's 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 unfortunate, especially for for dynasty if you were counting on him early. Um, we'll get through the rest of this real quick. Anthony Miller suffered a sprained ankle. He also apparently tweeted he's fine twice and deleted it twice. So I don't know what that means. Mm. <laughs> what? what? I don't know if he wanted to protect his ADP. I have no idea. Um, well, sometimes you wake up and you're feeling all right. It's so, like, I'm fine. Look, in the first thing, a then lot of us. he takes his first step. A lot of us, the first thing we do, we grab the phone. All right, well, <laughs> catching up. Is there any news? No. Oh, I feel all right. Puts it down. Then he tries to stand up. <laughs> And he goes, oh, I better delete that oh, tweet. Crap. But it's the second time around that's really confusing. Well, look. Because then later he's, he's like, bag. no, I am fine. Well, it because looks like I am. The first thing you do after you get out of bed, well, the majority of people, I assume, we go to the bathroom. And maybe he was sitting there. Oh, I feel great again. <laughs> and then he re-stood up. And, oh, okay. oh I got to delete it again. Mike has it figured out, Jason. <laughs> Mike, Mike has seen the morning <laughs> that he had. Um, I'm just saying I understand couple more things. Antonio Callaway, wide receiver for the Browns, uh, has been suspended four games for substance abuse policy. And he's hurt. And he's banged up. Rashad Higgins, any interest? No. Okay. Be because I didn't really have Antonio Callaway interest. interest. Not, I, don't, not, I don't need the third wide receiver on that team. Okay. Theo Riddick will miss six to eight weeks. Fractured his shoulder during the preseason game. Devontae oh. Booker lifts. Yeah, he does. And then uh, the Saints have released this guy. His name is Rashard Matthews. Mm -hmm. Why are we bringing up Rashard well, yeah, Matthews on this podcast? Here. We're only bringing we it up along. because on the, the 18th of June, Jason, you oh. and I made a water bet. Why do we do shows so early? <laughs> <laughs> we make these stupid bets and guess in what? April through June. Where we're <laughs> you said he'd make the roster. I, I did. And now you're going to Now you're gonna spin the wheel. All right. You I'll spin wet, the wheel. So. <laughs> Congratulations! You really got me with that, Rashard Matthews. Hey, we've been we've been bantering about Rashard Matthews for a couple of years. That's I've been true. trying to tell you he was That's done, true. but right. you didn't want to believe it. Um, and then a couple hype pieces. Chris Carson will catch the ball a lot more. This is the sound bit from Pete Carroll. Okay, we'll see what happens. He said he has the best hands on the team. That's what Carroll said. Did said he, he could be a hand model. Did he have uh, <laughs> like George Costanza? Did he have those hands last year? Same ones. Same hands? Didn't throw like, to him, though. He didn't. We're not, this is not a Frankenstein where no. he got him replaced? Not, no swippy swappy. Oh, okay. By the way, Jerry Jones believes Tony Pollard could carry the load in Dallas. This Jer is the same Jerry Jones that said Tavon Austin would rule the world last year. Jerry Jones is just, just running roughhouse on <laughs> Zeke right now. A little bit of hype this morning. Dan Campbell, a.k.a. Guns oh, Mahoney. Guns Mahoney's back! From days past, that's the Saints tight end coach, said it's Pretty easy to see the impact Jared Cook has had during training camp. Some hype around uh, him, quote, starring in training camp. Like I, a movie? I think he's got a great opportunity with Drew Brees. Do you care about this hype? I think Jason does because he's writing his name down. I think that's an up arrow. <laughs> Uh, Jason has been so hesitant. I have been hesitant because we've 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 seen tight ends come here no, we, and no, fail. We we know what you're talking about, Jason. It is very Kobe Fleener related. Well, it's Kobe Fleener. It's the second time around with Ben Watson, but, but the first time around with Ben Watson was successful. It's really it's a crapshoot. I think I don't think it's a guarantee that Jared Cook is heavily utilized in this offense. This is not the old school Saints that had a crazy pass volume. They are a rush first team now even though they have Drew Brees and Michael Thomas but if it does land that way I mean you have to keep your eyes open to the possibility there's plenty of tight ends who later in their career you know they switch teams or something Delaney Walker even Greg Olson you know you was he, he was a bear yeah he yeah. was a Chicago bear and so uh if Jared Cook switches teams he's not that old for a tight end I think he's 30 he could he could still make some noise this year all right, news and notes brought to you 32, Jason. today by Book? Sleeper. Yeah. Download the free app, move your league to a modern platform with infinite customizations. We're going to get into our top 10 quarterbacks. That is today's show. Before we do so, I want to thank um, the sponsors that help keep this show going, including ADT. Real protection from ADT is personalized smart home security with a system that fits your unique 
needs. It's the latest innovation in smart home security. Everything from HD video doorbells, high-def indoor and outdoor cameras, smart locks and lights, and smart thermostats, all controlled from a central ADP app or the sound of your voice. By the way, you can bring the ADT Go app with you. Features location sharing, safe driving reports, an emergency SOS button. Real Protection is a team of professionals who help safeguard your home with rapid connection to first responders 24-7. That's how ADT, the nation's number one smart home security provider, keeps your family safe wherever you go. That is Real Protection. That is ADT. And to learn more, you can visit ADT.com slash podcast. And we also want to thank Rippling. Every minute you spend updating your company's employee data and systems is a minute that you don't spend on doing your core job. And thankfully, now there is Rippling. It's the first platform that combines all your HR and IT systems together. And when you combine them together, magic happens. Imagine if you could hire someone and take care of all their HR needs, including payroll, health insurance, 401k, in as little as 90 seconds, but the same goes for your IT. You can get their computer ordered, create all their accounts and all the apps that you use like Gmail, GitHub, Slack in one unified onboarding flow. That's how easy Rippling makes running your business. It's also why they won the PC Mag's Editor's Choice Award. It's the top rated HR and IT software on the G2 crowd. Stop burning valuable time on admin work. Use Rippling and your HR for your HR and IT. Make it a well-oiled machine. If you're looking for an easier way to supercharge your employees, go to rippling.com slash footballers and get 20% off. That's rippling.com slash footballers for 20% off. Quarterbacks. Check this out, Jay. Apparently, we were doing shows in February. Wait. Yeah, that was, you were there. Now, when was... In this stretch of this this stretch that we've been doing shows, when was that first show? Since, the first show ever since our last break. Uh, we we don't ever stop. Oh man, you mean we years and years and years, years straight of doing? Why this? do you think I look the way I look, Jay? Inc- I'm just <laughs> you're just a little disheveled, just just torn down. Um, we did a shocking stats episode in February with some stats about quarterbacks. And before we talk about them today, I want to lay the groundwork for a few of the reasons why we believe in drafting them later in your drafts. Um, So in 2017, we only saw 17 total quarterback performances of 30-plus fantasy points in four-point leagues from weeks 1 through 16. In 2018, we equaled that total in just four weeks that is an amazing 33 weeks of 30-plus fantasy points, double the previous year. What is that saying? It's saying there are a lot of quarterbacks putting up big numbers in fantasy football. Kyle, the Borgogan himself, our editor, pulled up an incredible chart. I want to illustrate what happened last year at the quarterback position. This is, this is awesome. This, this should illuminate for those of you in one quarterback leagues. Last year, there was only one quarterback in the top 12 ADP that ended up finishing above his average draft position and finished. And that was Andrew Luck. He was drafted as the QB eight last year, finished as the QB four. On average, the rest of the guys in that top 12, they ended up finishing seven spots lower on average than where you drafted them. I would say, just going through the chart real quick, basically you were happy or you were okay if you took Deshaun Watson, Drew Brees, Sort of, because we've we've always talked about you know Drew Brees. Watson was taken at, as the number two quarterback. Ended the year at number five. Right. Drew Brees was six and finished at eight. Andrew Luck, of course, had the positive return, and that's that's just that's the end of the list. Right. I mean that that's it. Because if you drafted Aaron Rodgers as the clear quarterback one, you are very disappointed. You spent that capital when he finishes as the quarterback seven. You have, you know, he's not even a top six guy, and and you take Brady and Russell Wilson and a lot of these guys early, they didn't pan out. But you want to know who did? A lot of the late round quarterbacks, the Pat Mahomes, you know, who now clearly has to be the number one quarterback you draft, right? Wrong. Yeah, yeah. I know. I still say it's right. <laughs> I'm taking Mahomes number one. But yeah, I mean, last year <laughs> the thing is, is you're not drafting a guy that high in ADP. And, and hoping that they end up – if they end up at 10 or 11, you've lost. You've lost in a big way because there's 12 that start on a weekly basis. Last year, 
in particular was very, very kind to the late round strategy. It it always is, but last year in particular was was a banner year for the strategy. Um, also jumped from 2017 to 2018. In 2017, there were six quarterbacks that completed 65% or more of their passes. Do you know how many there were last year? I do because I'm looking at it. 20. 20. And that is with eight games played as the qualifier. So you're just seeing an increase in total production at the position. Doesn't mean that you can't, you know, you're not smart with your quarterback position. Just means that if you invest a high draft capital pick on a quarterback, they have to deliver. On average, last year, they're not delivering to where you drafted them. You know, Patrick Mahomes, we said, if you could book it, if you could say 50 touchdowns, I got it. It's, it's in the bag. I'm probably taking Patrick Mahomes in the second round. That's yeah, I mean, what I, I would probably do that. If you knew you were getting what you got last year, he deserves to be not only the first quarterback taken off the board, but at his ADP or even better, completely agree. It's probably not going to happen based on, you know, the history of the NFL. And then for those of you that play in two quarterback leagues, we'll talk about this as we go along. But I think it's important because a lot of people out there play super flex and they always want to know, okay, you say late round quarterback, but does that apply in super flex? Because things change. You don't have 12 quarterbacks. You have Supply 24 demand. starting yes. quarterbacks. But the strategy does not change when it comes to tier-based drafting. If For me, so I'll, I'll share my strategy. I like to get three uh, quarterbacks in a in a two quarterback league that are later guys. You know, if I could end up with a Jameis Winston, a Dak Prescott, and then you know the third being like an Andy Dalton or someone super late, I am gonna have good starters week in and week out based on matchups or you know being able to play the right two out of those three. But if you think about where those guys get drafted versus where all the other quarterbacks are getting drafted super early in your drafts you're going to get a lot of other good running backs and wide receivers while you bypass. All right, number one on our consensus quarterback rankings, Patrick Mahomes. His current average draft position is the middle of the third round. Last year, we know what happened. He was kind of good. He was the MVP of football. Um, so not much to say. Pat Thorman tweeted the weapons at Patrick Mahomes' disposal and their and their 40 times. They're very fast. Miko Hardman had a 4-3, 40 yard dash. You saw him score on an end around a Tyreek like play. And he looked so fast. And and the thing Holy about that, crap. the thing about that end around, since we are talking Patrick Mahomes, it was one of those takeaways where I wondered we don't have enough NFL data historically on the tap pass that has become popularized over the last few years where Gotta basically the, pass, the handoff becomes a passing attempt which is stupid but it is clearly not going away that that play that was in the round pass? handoff was actually a tap pass that was a passing that touchdown would be a passing touchdown for Patrick Mahomes yeah we saw Tyreek do it he has a 4-3-4-40 Sammy Watkins a 4-4-3 Damian Williams a 4-4-5 that those guys are fast yes and they can all catch and um this offense is going to be great so does he throw for 50 probably not three players have done it ever yes but uh, at the same time, you guys saw the jump from 2017 to 2018 in production at the quarterback position. The league is changing, um, scoring, things like that. So could he throw for 40 and tap for 10? Ooh. <laughs> Get back up to that 50 number. Yeah, not not likely. He actually slow his pace over the second half wasn't as strong as his first half, but he was still an absolute dominator. Um, so, it, look, what is there to say? Patrick Mahomes, yeah, he's number one on the list. He is the number one quarterback. Regression is coming, but I, even though historically speaking, the probability of of getting even over the forty plus touchdown mark is low, of any of the guys in the field, you would bet on Patrick Mahomes. Do you have, um, his touchdown total that you projected him for in your head? Do you? I can pull that up. Let me. Uh, I just got to switch to the actual team. Because I'm wondering, you know, you said regression him, is coming. I have him at 38. 38 touchdown? Yes. Jason, do you have yours? Uh, Yeah, I have Patrick Mahomes right now throwing for 42. Yeah, I got him at 41. So, yeah, it's going to be fine. He's going to be, unless he gets hurt, that offense is going to be dynamic. They're big play. You know, you might play in a league with bonuses for long touchdowns. I don't know if you're going to see more of those than in the Kansas City offense. Yeah, someone sent me a, a question, and it was, "Do you how high do you take Mahomes in this system? It's a one quarterback, but the bonus point structure was just insanity, where if you, game's over 300 yards, you get this huge bonus. Game's 
where a, a 40 plus yard touchdown pass you get this huge bonus and it was like man I guess I move him up but I'm st- but even even then I'm still not going to reach for him in the third round Aaron Rodgers number two on our consensus rankings Jason has him at three Mike and I have him at two um you know, it's been a little while since we had the 2009 to 2012 Aaron Rodgers where he was the first, second, first, second quarterback. 2014, he was number one. 2016, he was number one. The last two years, banged up in 2017. And then last year finished at six. And despite hurt last the fact year that well. they threw, Yeah, he was hurt and played through it. I mean, they threw the ball a ton last year, but the efficiency for Aaron Rodgers wasn't there. Um, you still had some monster games here and there, but it wasn't really vintage Aaron Rodgers so an investment in Rodgers is an investment in him returning to what he's been it's an investment in that it's also an investment in him throwing in the red zone this is this has been my main takeaway from Aaron Rodgers season last year where you look back the past four years he averages a pace of at least 100 attempts inside the red zone and last year that dropped to 64 and he was still the quarterback six on the season uh the offense was in disarray aside from Devontae Adams, Geronimo Allison started. Uh, he was the number two guy, and through those first four games, I mean, Allison was averaging five for 72 in those games. It, it was it was solid. He could count on a wide receiver too. But then Allison went down, and it was rookies who they looked overmatched. But now with another, uh, with another offseason and with this same core, I think Rodgers is in a much safer place to return to dominance. If he if he were to return to dominance, then where you're drafting him right now in the sixth round, which is way later than what you had been drafting, I think is a good value. It's always been in the past. It's, what round do you draft Aaron Rodgers? I remember year after year, it's like, well, if he gets the fifth or sixth, maybe. So obviously right now, his, his average draft position is in the sixth. I find myself not believing he's going to return to dominance. I am actually quite afraid of Aaron Rodgers. Look, he's got the best, I think, receiving core he's had in a, since he lost Jordy because the year two Marquez uh, and Equinemia St. Brown, Geronimo in the slot is probably at this point as reliable as uh, Randall Cobb was, and he's got Devontae Adams. Um, but, you know, it's it's one of those things where he's 35 years old, and I think Tom Brady is ruining, you know, Brady and Breeze are really saying, like, look, you can play till you're 40, no problem. But Aaron Rodgers has always been one of those kind of mobile guys. Get out of the pocket, extend a play, bomb it deep. And and I'm not saying, like, I'm not calling for the end of Rodgers here, but I am saying I am lacking confidence that he's going to go back and be that guy who, with Jordy, was averaging 40 touchdowns in and out of a season since 2014. Since 2014, so this is, what, the last five years? His 16-game pace, I know he's – Missed a lot of games in that, so I'm saying 16 game pace. His full season pace is only 34 passing touchdowns a season, which is good. That's a very good that's, number. That's still very good. But that's not Aaron Rodgers' dominance when he finishes as the number one quarterback. That's what I'm saying. Like, so is I he going to bounce back to that? I mean, outside of Devontae Adams, I would probably argue that. Sure, we're we're anticipating players to step up, but. I mean, it's hard to say that you guarantee MVS is going to step up. You guarantee Allison's going to be consistent. You guarantee that Equinemius will be able to make a play, or Jimmy Graham, it is, uh, you know, old in the tooth, is going to make a play for Rodgers. That they're going to throw the ball to the running back with. Real, I mean, there is there are variables and a brand Certainly. new head coach that, and it hasn't gone exactly to plan. Bringing in Matt Lafleur, there's constant criticism from Aaron Rodgers. Um, so I think that there are more question marks around that offense despite the fact we have them ranked where we do um so just bringing those to mind if you want if you want to talk about a player who i don't lack confidence in it's this next guy my number two quarterback sure deshaun watson i think is uh, i mean you i think he has the best chance of supplanting pat mahomes as the number one quarterback because of his rushing ability combined with his just elite getting the job done touchdown throwing that he's had in his entire career getting the you job like, get, touchdown throwing <laughs> I, are you I, done I, talking i am done talking I, <laughs> that's the end of the sentence well i my, thought you might have more i needed mike um, to chime in on that best receiver and in the I game did deandre hopkins will fuller when he's been healthy and active with deshaun watson it's been something to behold last year incredibly strong finish from weeks 12 on uh look 
551 rushing yards, five rushing touchdowns. I do agree that Watson has the ability to be that number one guy. Love Duke Johnson's addition. Uh, hopefully Kiki is fine. So, yeah, there's a lot to like about Deshaun Watson. Right now you got to draft him in the fifth round. And last year, Watson, like, there is, there's actually not a lot of pass attempts. So the, the past two years, the Texans have been bottom 10 in total pass attempts with Watson, except they throw near the goal line. He had 42 attempts inside the 10. That's the fifth That's fifth among quarterbacks. Uh, so like the scoring opportunities are frequently there. You can see that. You, you feel that when you have Lamar Miller on your team. You go, well, they're scoring a bunch of points. Why isn't Lamar Miller rushing in more touchdowns? It's because they go to Watson when, when they're inside the 10. Either he throws one or, or he rushes it in. Number four is Carson Wentz. Thank you. My goodness. We have Thank him at you, Jason. four. Thank you. We do have him at four. I think it makes Andy. a lot of sense. Mike has him at 11. His ADP is the QB7. We've got him at four. So this is the first kind of step out of ADP in a big way. Um, we, I, I've talked about Carson Wentz at length. He's a my guy. I've talked about the difference Deshaun Jackson has made for fantasy quarterbacks throughout the, his career, minus Jameis. Talked about the difference a healthy Alshon has made to Carson Wentz's numbers. Carson throws an extra touchdown. Uh, a little more than that when a healthy Alshon Jeffries on the field. Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz, J.J. Arcega, oh, yeah. Whiteside around the goal line. His, his offensive weapons are, are tops. Plus, they're going to win the Super Bowl, Mike. Remember, oh, that, remember, I did hear remember that. Remember I saw the future? Yeah, I, I remember you saw the future on that show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, that's really all it comes down to, right? We've seen Carson Wentz as an MVP candidate. We've seen him dominate in fantasy. Now he's removed from the ACL injury enough to where he doesn't even have the brace on. I think you're going to get back to a little bit more of the scrambling, the running, but you combine that with easily his best weapons he's had in his short career. All, all the weapons Andy just named. I mean, I don't see how you're going to easily stop this offense, even at running back. I mean, Miles Sanders projects to be a better pass catching back than what they've been dealing with with the Corey Clement and uh, Josh Adams regime. So, uh, so we're I, we're in Jay, but Mike isn't in. So why doesn't you know? Well, yeah. it's not that I'm not in. I mean, I just prefer. You're certainly not as in. At, correct at eleven. I mean, I, I have them in, in my top 12. I'm just – my expectations are are far more tempered for for Carson Wentz when I look back at what the, – like the, the things he's actually been able to do on the field in terms of production. I, I just – I don't see the monster season coming for Carson. For me, he's my favorite late-round pick that could end up in that upper echelon. That's kind of why he's, in, he's endorsed. He's got the Andy Holloway, my guy, endorsement. Um, Andrew Luck at number five, Matt Ryan at number six. Luck right now, step one, he's in a red jersey, hanging around practice. So he's not playing yet, but it you know he seems to think he'll be ready to go. Andrew Luck was my quarterback three before some of the calf scares just pushed him down for people that are drafting right now, want him to be aware, have that risk baked into his – uh, ranking um if we knew that he was healthy completely you said that the 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 Eagles are winning the Super Bowl I had early said that the Colts were my dark horse to win the Super Bowl um that is entirely dependent upon Andrew Luck's health the they're not a great team without Andrew Luck and with Andrew Luck they are one of the best offenses in the game I think I believe in Frank Reich um, I, I think at the end of this year, if we've got a healthy Andrew Luck, Frank Reich will be discussed in the same conversations as, you know, when we talk about McVay and Reed and just right. these great offensive minds that manufacture touchdowns for people. Uh, you've seen that w when he was with the Eagles. You know, we, we just talked about, you know, two years ago when it was Carson Wentz was the number five quarterback in football. That was with Frank Reich. Well, and he was the number one through the time he got hurt. Right. So it's one of those uh, – situations where it's hard to discuss Andrew Luck here without em talking health emphatically because number four in 2013 number two in 2014 number four in 2016 number five in 2018 if he's healthy he's great that's what's, it what's wild is that that number finish for Andrew Luck 
I mean, I, it just speaks to what the other quarterbacks are doing in the league because this was actually his best year. And he was coming off of a completely missed season. 39 touchdowns. 39 touchdowns, almost 4,600 yards, and his completion percentage on 639 attempts was over 67%. Like, Andrew Luck was awesome. 32 of the 39 touchdowns were red zone touchdown throws. He's just, he is a great quarterback, and the fact that he can come off of the completely missed season in his first, first go round with Frank Reich, I have supreme confidence in Andrew Luck if he's on the field. Matt Ryan comes in at number six on our consensus rankings. Uh, there is not consensus, however, in the studio about Matt Ryan. Mike and I both have him at four overall. Jason does not. I have him at four. Team. Team. <laughs> it's, just, um, it's so egregious. It's, it really look, is maybe the most egregious thing. It's not egregious. Here, here's here's the thing. My my no, case, it's not egregious. It's egregious. My uh, look, a lot of people out there. Uh, I mean, he finishes the quarterback two last year, so he has to be, you know, top five this year, right? For sure, because that's how, uh, you know, we think is whatever happened last year will happen this year. Except that isn't usually what happens. Uh, no one has made that more clear than Matt Ryan. If you look at his fantasy finishes over the last seven eight years, where he's gone from the number two. To the the year before, he was the fifteenth quarterback. The, he was the two the year before that. He was the nineteenth before that. The seven, the fifteen, and I don't say that to do the whole ping pong. Good year, bad year. Good year, bad year. This is a bad year. What I what I do is that three of the last six years he has finished at the quarterback fifteen or lower. So ranking him as the quarterback fourteen is not egregious. It's all about touchdowns. That's it. I've got Matt Ryan for forty six hundred plus passing yards he's on a great offense is just touchdowns does he throw you know over the last four years his average 16 game pace is 28 touchdowns if he throws 28 touchdowns he's going to be where I've got him ranked how you know I've got him right now for 29 touchdowns and of course no rushing touchdowns he had three rushing touchdowns last year which That's was fair he hasn't scored a rushing touchdown in the five previous seasons so it's all touchdowns if he goes out and throws 36 touchdowns I'm a buffoon, and he's going to be the number four quarterback out there because I, I think we all agree the yards will be there with the Falcons. Yes. This is just how many touchdowns does he throw. Much I'm, stronger beginning to last year than end. The first nine weeks he was you know fighting with – you know we brought up those terms before about there was a, a window of about seven, eight weeks where he was the same as Patrick Mahomes last year. But the first half versus the second half, much stronger first half for Matt Ryan last year. Um, I, I love the weapons. I love Julio. Calvin Ridley, year two, Sanu, Hooper. Um, it's all before Matt Ryan to uh, do what he needs to do to stay in that upper echelon of quarterbacks. Yeah, and I, what we don't disagree on, Jason, is everything with Matt Ryan is touchdowns. Over the last seven years, he has the second most passing yards slash passing yards per game behind only Drew Brees. He has the second highest completion percentage behind only Drew Brees. Matt Ryan is great I don't think Matt Ryan gets the the national recognition that he deserves he is a great great quarterback and I like yards and it's if you are if you, attempts I should say completions and yards it just it turns into touchdowns statistically speaking and Matt Ryan has had some weird ones he, he Julio Jones has also had some weird ones and I think that the addition of Calvin Ridley coming off of 10 touchdowns his rookie season, I think that that is a huge deal. And I think that that increases the odds that my, Matt Ryan will be up over that 30-touchdown mark. He was the NFL MVP in 2016. So that that's the you know the ceiling for Matt Ryan. He was the NFL MVP in that year they went to the Super Bowl. Jared Goff. Oh, yes! Jared Goff comes in at number seven. Um, he's seen his stock rise in the studio here over the last month or two. Uh, can't really love um, Woods and Cooks and Cup and not love Jared Goff. There has been some talk around camp. I don't know if you guys read this about uh, multi-tight end sets as a way to manage the reps oh. for Cooper Cup. So Gerald Everett may yeah, see Mount Everett. more time on the field. But uh, inversely, you may see a reduced snap count for Cooper Cup as he comes off the ACL and they try to control his reps. Nevertheless, great offense, 
great weapons. They added one in Daryl Henderson this offseason. A lot's been made of Jason's love for Robert Woods. Uh, Brandon Cooks, year two now with this team. so He, he could, doesn't even remember what that's like. Year two with a team? <laughs> it's been a while. It's <laughs> insane. It's definitely been a while. So uh, had had some real nasty games at the end of last year. It wasn't just yes. the Super Bowl. It was week 13 when he had eight fantasy points. It was week 14 when he had negative fantasy points. Uh, really didn't put up monster numbers at the quarterback position from week 12 on. Yeah, so it was, it was a rough ending of the season. It was real rough. Yeah, and I will not refute that. If you want my full take on Jared Goff of why I believe in him, he's a my guy. He's he's my favorite late round, later round quarterback. You can check that out on the My Guys show. But here's just a quick highlight of why I like Jared Goff. Last year he was a top six quarterback over 31 percent of his games, which is that's the same as Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Big Ben, Deshaun Watson, guys that are you expect to put up big games. He had the second most completions of 20 or more yards behind only Patrick Mahomes. The Rams offense is is elite, and they are going to stay there as elite. You have three wide receivers being drafted in the top 50. I would like the guy who's throwing them the ball because I believe in those wide receivers, and I think that there's room for growth as well, some positive regression coming inside the red zone. Both Patrick Mahomes, Andrew Luck, and Jared Goff, they all had, all had 100 attempts inside the red zone, except both Mahomes and Andrew Luck had over 30 touchdowns on those attempts. Well, Jared Goff was down at 23, and I believe that was a direct result of Cooper Cup not being around for the second half of the season. I love Jared Goff. All right, Baker Mayfield at eight. What do we think about Baker Mayfield? Because I know we all love him. Mike, you got him at five. Jason and I have him at nine. Um, I, he's going to have a very productive season without question. He doesn't run the ball like other quarterbacks do traditionally. Um, so takes a little bit of the top end off for me. That's why he landed where he landed. I'm, I'm not out to bury Baker because he's being drafted as the QB five. Jason and I have him at nine. It's just the way it ended up. So, I, you know, I view him as being overdrafted. People want Baker Mayfield to be great. He we all great. want it to be great. He, I, I believe he is great. Well, the, for fantasy, though. Yeah. And I think There's he, a difference. You can be great as an NFL quarterback. Certainly. You do not have to be a top five fantasy guy. Here's here's the issue with Baker. When we That chart we brought up last year of investing this high in a quarterback, they you're, you're shrinking the range of outcomes that, that will be positive for your team when you spend that pick on Baker. He's my fifth quarterback. He, he's going ADP as the fifth quarterback? Is that what you're saying? Yes, it is. yes, he is. I still won't take him there, though, in a single quarterback league just based off of – we're playing fantasy. It's a game of probability. However, last year, once he was the starter, he was averaging 271 yards and two full touchdowns per game. That's 4,300 yards and 33 touchdowns. And they added in a generational, an elite wide receiver in Odell Beckham who – when Beckham was on the field for Eli, Eli's passer completion percentage went up three full points. I mean, Beckham is a huge deal to a quarterback. You have to project that. You have to project right. Beckham making the difference because last year only 14% of his games were in that 25-plus category. I think it was two times. And he had a number of bust games. He busted 50% of the time where he was under 15 fantasy points. Certainly. So you're projecting the impact of Beckham, Freddie Kitchen's offense for the whole season, um, off season of year two, yes. off season as the starter, but lose you know losing Duke Johnson. Um, I don't know how much that really matters, but Doesn't it, it matters a little bit because he caught sixty seventy balls. So um, I just think we just have a different range of outcomes for Baker. Yeah, early early in the off season when he was like still a ninth round pick, he was one of my favorite guys because you take you're taking the shot that he can. Go this Pat year's Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, and you know once he's up where he's at now, it's like well. Some of that has to happen just to get the value of the draft pick. So I, I'm kind of out on Baker for the value. Uh, I still see an outcome where he finishes as the number one fantasy quarterback and just explodes. But I think more realistically, he is a good fantasy quarterback, a top 10 fantasy quarterback who's being drafted at a level where you really have to have him be elite this year just to make the pick a quality pick. That's it. All right. Number nine. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Cam Newton being drafted as the QB 10 right now. One of Jason's my guys being drafted at the end of the eighth round. Last year struggled with a uh, serious shoulder injury. His best friend was Christian McCaffrey through that uh, rough stretch, and then they basically sat him down. I mean, the numbers just went down, down, down from week 13 on, 15, 10, 4, and then didn't play the last two games of the season. Um, probably, I mean, he's in – Goff, Wentz, Newton, they're in that category of incredible values at the end of fantasy draft. Yeah, I mean, if, if you take a look at – so we're just talking about Baker, right? Last year they, they basically played the same amount of games – Two at the end of the game, at the end of the year, lost for Cam. Two at the beginning of the year, lost for uh, Baker. Although Cam was playing hurt for a lot of the end of that season, you look at those top ten performances, those actual week winning for fantasy quarterback performances. Baker with four, Cam with eight in the top ten, and that was even though he played hurt a lot of that. I similar to you, Mike. I've made my argument on the My Guy Show. If if he plays a sixteen game season, he's a better than the quarterback three on average. He gives you monster, monster week winning performances. And with DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel coming into year two, Greg Olson back and the ultimate valve, a safety valve in Christian McCaffrey. I, yeah. I, I just really like his late, you know, it, this is year, one year where, three for Samuel year two for DJ Moore. Yes. If, if it was, if it was Cam Newton where he usually is going, then I, I would be off. But since he's in the ninth round, but we, you like him more than Lamar. You like him more than Kyler Murray. You guys both have him ranked higher than those guys. Yes. Uh, do you imagine? I mean, I imagine both. Who do you have rushing for more total yardage, Cam Newton or Kyler Murray? Oh, between oh, – I thought you were going to go Lamar. The answer is Lamar say, Jackson. Yeah, Lamar, Lamar. That's why I didn't go Lamar. I know that we all agree Lamar will run like I have, crazy. I have Cam Newton down for 555. <laughs> Rushing yards, uh, Kyler Murray, 575. Oh, come on, <laughs> jerk. 575. So I have Kyler Murray down for slightly more yards. But I do think the passing game. Uh, I mean, it, we'll it's, see. It's, yeah, we'll see what happens. I, uh, I, um, <coughs> You can see 100% of our 2019 stat projections on a player-by-player player basis. In the ultimate draft kit, you can plug in your custom scoring. In the ultimate draft kit to see how the projections change based on your league format. Right now, Brooks, these are our consensus by six-point passing touchdown, right? Yes, sir. And that's there's a pretty big difference yes. in the rankings when you look at leagues that are four-point versus six-point per passing touchdown at the quarterback position. For example, Josh Allen is my seven overall quarterback in standard scoring. Josh Allen is my 17 overall quarterback in six-point scoring. When you drop down to four point, the rushing yardage takes over. It's uh, yeah, it's more valuable. Yeah, it's more valuable. And on top of that, rushing touchdowns. I mean, that's it's an extra two point. Yes, because you're getting six for the rushing touchdown yeah. versus four for the passing. Which, of course, that makes sense. Yep. All right, number ten, Drew Brees. We'll round it out with Drew. Number ten on my rankings. Jason at ten. Mike at eight. You know, there's always the possibility that Drew Brees. Uh, it's in there. Throws for more touchdowns than we expect. It's in there. He's been a top ten finisher in fantasy for all of the all of the years that the consistency chart allows for. From 2009 through 2018, he's been a top ten guy, including you know the early days. It was you know two, one, two, but over the last five years, six, six, three, nine, eight. I don't see him. You know, for a guy that doesn't rush the ball at all. Yes, he has his little sneaky touchdowns, though. He does get those. Very sneaky. But it's hard to see Breeze being – I feel like he's just a, a little bit better like Phillip Rivers right now yeah, in terms of fantasy. Consistent, can give you a huge game, can also give you a game like week 15, five points. Week 13, seven points. Week 8, six points. Because the, uh, the rushing numbers for Kamara and company, they can take over that game, and the defense is really good. So I think that's the kind of picture for Breeze. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the reality is you look at 2017 and 2018 and you see a very similar Drew Brees both years, the difference being last season he had more games where the touchdowns happened to come through the air and they were his and they weren't rushed in versus, uh, you know, 2017, he only had four weeks where he was a quarterback one, which is like brutally bad, yet he still finished the season as a quarterback one just because – He's never going to finish as like the quarterback twenty five on a week. That just 
that Drew Brees is too good for that. He has enough yardage, enough uh, offense behind him to where he's going to be. The yardage has been dropping. So it's, it's one of those things where I'm never excited about Drew Brees. I, I can't imagine being in on him. He's got such a great name that in you know usual leagues, you think Hall of Fame, unbelievable fantasy superstar Drew Brees, I want him on my roster. So he gets drafted a little bit higher than I'm ever going to be willing to draft a guy who doesn't rush the ball doesn't get those free fantasy points for quarterbacks. So you've got to have him throwing a lot of yards, a lot of touchdowns, and there's just more exciting upside guys. I just, when I look at quarterback, all I care about is who has the chance for monstrous week winning performances. And even though Drew Brees, look, he had, he had four top three performances last season, which is really good. Um, I, I hesitate on Brees. His two lowest passing yardage output seasons of his career in New Orleans the past two years. It, it, yes, granted, things he, have changed there. He, uh, granted, he would, he only played 15 games last year, but that, that was his first sub-4,000 yard season since he played football in San Diego. Jared Jared Cook could help things for Drew Brees. Trey Cole Smith, year two, healthy Ted Ginn. There are some, you know, I'm sure he will have a handful of games like he did last year. There were six games where he was 25-plus fantasy points. Those were games where you're like, oh, my gosh, Drew Brees is Drew Brees. So um, the ping pong can happen to greater extremes with Drew Brees. A couple quick questions as we close things out. Biggest bust potential of the top ten guys we mentioned. Who has the biggest chance to fully – let's say you're in a super flex. Let's say you have taken a shot on a quarterback. Um, maybe you got a steal on one of them, a couple rounds below ADP. Who's got the biggest bust potential of that top ten? Of our top ten rankings, <laughs> we already know Jason. Well, yeah, I mean, you're going to say Matt Ryan in the sense. I'm going to say that you're going to say Matt Ryan. Yes, sure. Uh, I, you know, w would he be a bust? I guess w where he's being drafted right now. I don't. I don't know. Andrew Luck is the guy that comes to mind with the the injury. Um, but I guess I'll I'll go with Matt Ryan for rankings' sake. Uh, I think it's probably probably Baker uh, because he's being drafted at QB five. But I'll throw Carson Wentz out there. It's, yeah. it's a possibility that Wentz busts on the basis of maybe he really can't run for 350 yards anymore. So I'll throw him out there. And it's it, it's not that I don't like him, but it is Wentz because he's not even inside my top 10 right now. Um, okay. Are, are there any of these top 10 guys most likely to be on your team? Is it Jared Goff, Jared Cam Newton, Goff, Carson Wentz? Booty scooting. Cam Newton. All right. I think that is it unless you guys want to uh, – you got anything else to add? I don't. I've given everything I had. You've given everything on this fine Tuesday slash Monday? <laughs> Brooks, do you have anything to add? Nah. Oh, he Some came back from under the door. Um, he slithered back in. We want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A Lev Bell signed New York Jets jersey yesterday, $72 at pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS, and you can save 5 bucks on your first sports memorabilia purchase. And if you didn't see the Sleeper Bowl, us commentating on the Juju Celebrity Draft, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Don't miss it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.